Hey, how's it going do-it-yourselfers? Today we're going to talk about what are the symptoms and also how you can diagnose a bad strut or a shock absorber on your car. Now driving around with a bad strut or a shock absorber on your car can be quite dangerous. These can cause poor handling, excessive body roll, poor steering when you, know, when you have a wobbly steering wheel, also poor traction and therefore longer than normal stopping distance. So make sure you watch this video all the way to the end so you know how you can exactly diagnose a bad strut or a shock absorber. Now before we go any further, there is something that I need to mention. Uh, as you may remember, in my previous video I stated that I was running for president and that I was working on my ego. Now most of you were very supportive and I thank you for that, but a couple of you objected to that and said that was wrong. So today we're going to practice and work on something else. Hello ma'am. So yeah, tune in next week folks when we practice treason. All right, so just a quick explanation and a demonstration on this Pontiac. So when people talk about shocks, they're talking about this standalone piece, which on a lot of cars is gonna be on the rear of your vehicle and not as part of one unit with your spring assembly. And when they're talking about strut, they're talking about what you see here, both the dampener and the spring assembly as one unit, AKA McPherson strut. So basically what you see here, the spring would go over this piston and sit right here. So yeah, basically your struts and shocks are there to work as a dampener. So as you're driving and your car goes over a bump, the springs in your car quickly compress. As you drive over it, they quickly decompress. And if, it, if you don't have a strut or a shock absorber to dampen the quick compression and decompression of the spring, you're in for a very bouncy ride. Your car is just gonna be bouncing non-stop going down the road. So as your spring compresses, your strut over here will decompress with it as well, but you're only gonna allow it to decompress slowly and in a controlled fashion. Now, as far as how you can tell whether you have bad shocks or struts, well, let's start off with a good visual inspection of the tires. So you could have uneven wear on your tires if you have bad shocks or struts. However, a lot of times that's due to a different component that has failed. However, one good telltale sign that you have bad shocks or struts is that if you run your hand, on your tire, especially around the edges, you will feel that your fingers are gonna start catching every tread on the tire. And if that's what you're feeling when you run your fingers around the edges, that's due to a shock or a strut that's failing, allowing for excessive bouncing and movement of your suspension system, as a result, deforming your tires, especially around the edges. All right, next you wanna reach in there and inspect and make sure you don't have an oil leak around where the piston goes through because there's a seal here that if it fails, it's gonna allow the oil that's inside your strut assembly or shock absorber to leak out. And if that happens, well, you're gonna lose the dampening effect of your strut or shock assembly. Also, uh, the, uh, if you have a leak here, it doesn't necessarily mean it's the fault of the seal. It could also simply mean that the internal parts of your strut or shock assembly are failing, causing too much friction and too much heat, that excessive heat allowing, uh, making the oil expand and ooze out of where the seal is up top. However, as far as you're concerned, if you have a leak here, you need a new shock or strut. Next, you also wanna visually inspect your struts and shocks and make sure there are no noticeable dents on them. Now, generally speaking, there are two types of shocks out there, monotube, gas charge shocks and twin tube gas charge shocks. Uh, but generally speaking, more out of the factory, most car manufacturers use the twin tube. On those, if you have a small dent, it's probably not gonna affect the strut or the shock assembly. However, if you found out that you have a monotube shock, on those, like the name suggests, it's only a single tube here. This is just one tube, as opposed to the twin tube, which means there's a tube that you see on the outside, then on the inside, there's another tube. Uh, on a monotube, if this part gets dented, even if it's a rather small dent, your strut or shock is no good and you need to replace it. In fact, I'm pretty sure this German strut over here is a monotube. All right, next we're gonna cover the classic bounce test where you put your hand on the fender, on the side or the front or the rear of the car where you have, where you suspect you have bad struts or shocks and you bounce the car. If it goes down and moves back up and stabilizes, generally speaking, you have a good strut on that side. However, this is not a very perfect or good test, especially nowadays with the, with the struts, especially up front, since you have all, most of the weight of the car up front already on the springs. And you know, though that weight has compressed the spring and you know, your measly 200 pounds of force or pressure is not gonna de you know, compress the spring much further. However, this is still an okay test or a good test for the shocks in the back. Since again, you hardly have any weight relative to the front of the car in the back of the car. 
which means you can make it bounce a lot more than the front of the car. However, the best test and the giveaways are going to be found when you're driving the car. Let's say you're driving your car down the road, every time you hit a bump, your steering wheel wobbles back and forth a little bit. That's because when you hit that bump, your spring is moving up real quickly and rapidly, moving your suspension, and as a result, your inner and outer tie rods around, causing your steering wheel to wobble back and forth. Also, excessive body roll around turns. So, you know, let's say you're making a right turn. As you're turning the car, if, uh, you know, it's normal to body roll to the left a little bit, but if it's excessive or more than usual, then you want to make sure you inspect your struts and shocks because they're not dampening the effect of the, the springs compressing on the left side and decompressing on the right side quickly. All right, another obvious sign is that, you know, depending on whether you have bad struts up front or bad shocks in the back or <laughs> bad dampeners all over, is that whether you're, when you're accelerating the front of the car going up and the back of the car moving down or bottoming out. And on the opposite side, if you're braking the front of the car, nose diving real hard and the back of the car going up really high. Now this is especially dangerous because every time the, sh the weight of the vehicle is shifted to the front or to the back, I guess especially to the front when you're braking, there is very little weight on the rear tires. Therefore, there's very little traction on these and this is gonna affect your stopping distance. So, you know, if you have bad shocks or struts and you need to come to a quick stop, you may not always make it. So you wanna make sure if this is happening to you, you inspect your struts and shocks and replace them if necessary. So if you enjoyed this video, make sure you subscribe, hit that bell notification, but also if you wanna support me further, you can click on my videos in this corner or in the suggestion box. And if you wanna support me directly, you can check out my Patreon page, link right here. All right, thanks for watching. I'll see you guys next time.